Good morning and welcome to Casino Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Stephen Gort and I want to thank you for joining with me today. And my prayer for you is that you have loved looking at this short series over the last couple of weeks, a series that I've called The Generous Life. And today we're going to wrap it all up. So it's going to be week three today. And if you haven't caught up the earlier two sermons, you might like to look them up on YouTube as well. But today we are looking at the third and final in our series. And as we think about that too, we should also be thinking in terms of prayer. And there is so much that we could be praying for. And I've talked through this series that we should be praying, God, help me to be more generous. God, Provide me someone today that I can be generous to. And we've been praying that. And as I've been thinking through that and, and other things, I really think we need to keep praying for our brothers and sisters, not just here in New South Wales, but around the world that are still suffering under COVID-19. And we think of Sydney in lockdown, Victoria in lockdown and other places. Only God knows what's going to happen. God is in control. We can trust that and it should help us to bring everything to him in prayer. So let me do that as we come to look at week three, the generous life. Let me pray. Gracious Father, we just thank you that you are in control. We thank you for the trust and assurance we can have in that. Lord, we just pray for all those who cannot meet as a church today. We pray for those who might be trying to do things online like we are right now but also, Lord, for any and everyone in our world. We pray that they'll come to know you above all else, that they will be able to love you and follow you and live the life that you want them to. Lord, help us to be your message into our world and help us to understand that a little bit more today as we look at the generous life. So, Father, no matter what we've gone through in this last week, maybe even what we've gone through just today, Lord, we just offer it all up to you because you're the one who can do something about it. So, Father, we thank you today in your name. Amen. Well, as we come to look uh, today at our message, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to look at three short parts of Scripture in the New Testament. Probably the main one is going to be Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through to 47. So you might like to find that, but I'm also going to jump into Matthew's gospel just briefly and also into one of Paul's letters. But we'll look at that in just a little while. As we begin today, I want to give you two words that I want you to think about. They are the words impact and legacy. I want you to think about how you would define them, what do they mean to you, but also to ask the question, are they actually related? So we'll have a look at that. A little bit today. Now for me, when I think of the word impact, I've got to think of Wednesday night, state of origin, New South Wales against Queensland, and the impact of body on body. That's what immediately jumps to mind. But also what jumps to mind is that we've seen up here on the Northern Rivers lots and lots of uh, things in the newspaper, on TV, about the erosion on our coastline and particularly around Byron Bay. And when you see those, you can see the impact that the sea has on the beach. They're just some of the ways that I think about the word impact. The action of one object forcibly coming into contact with another. That's one definition. But is there actually another definition for the word impact. Well, think about who you are today. Do you realize that you are the person you are today because of the impact that others have had on your life? Maybe uh, for good or for bad, that the way your parents brought you up has an impact on who you are today. Teachers, your friend groups, church folk even, all of them have had an impact on who you are right now. Would you agree with that? Well, I think probably most of us would. So impact can have different meanings. 
Another meaning isn't just that we have one object forcibly coming into contact with another, it's where we have a strong effect on someone or something. Now, another way that we can think about this definition is to think about throwing a rock. Imagine throwing a rock into the Richmond River that goes around the edge of Cassini. Or imagine throwing a rock into the Wilson River down in Lisbon. When you throw a rock or into any other water that you know of, when you throw a rock into it, what happens? Well, we get an impact spot. And we're, from that impact spot, we get ripples that roll in. And what's amazing is that you might not actually even see the impact spot, but you can see the effect of the ripples, can't you? So you can may not see where the rock went in, but you can see the ripples across the water. That's the, Im that's the power of impact. Can you see how that relates to the people impacting us? Now, just quickly, think for, for this moment, someone who's impacted you. Now get their sort of the picture of them in your mind. Okay, got that? Well, do you realize that that person that impacted you was also impacted by someone else. And actually that person who impacted the person who impacted you also was impacted by one or more other people. Now, I sort of see that as the same thing as the ripple effect. So imagine as an example, maybe your mother was the one that you were thinking of. Your mother impacted you. Now for your mother, Maybe it was her mother. Maybe it was your grandmother that impacted her. And then maybe for your grandmother, it was someone at work that impacted her. And when you think about that, one person's impacted, they then impact someone else, then they then impact someone else. It gets all the way down to you. We get to see that ripple effect, an impact that ripples out. And we don't often really know where it started. You may not even know whom the person was at work that had that impact on your grandmother. All we know is that the impact happened in history. And today, I want to suggest to you that all people are impacted by one starting point at the beginning of human history. Now, when you read scripture, I think when you go right back to the beginning of the Bible, we get this impact that God created humans. He created Adam and Eve. He created us to be in a relationship with him. A generous God that breathed life into his creation and then he invited Adam and Eve to be a part of his story. And since that moment, since that time of the generosity of God in creating us in his image, that impact has gone throughout history. So for us today, we can trace who we are all the way back to the first generous impact. Now that impact from a generous God ripples throughout all of history. And then we get to the point of Jesus. Now, when we read the Gospels, we read about the story of Jesus. We see his miracles. We see his teaching. We know that he went to the cross. He died on the cross. And three days later, he was raised to life again. And we know why. Now, we see the generosity in Jesus and why he did it. That while humanity were God's enemies, we were destined to be judged for our sin, judged for disobeying God. But Jesus says, I will be generous enough. I will die on the cross. Jesus, someone who committed no sin, did nothing against God. Jesus said, I will die so that humanity can be forgiven. And that's generous. While we were his enemies, he died for us. And then three days later, resurrected again to life that shows he defeated sin and he defeated death. And we can see it and know that if we love and follow him, then we will receive that too. A huge impact. At the beginning of time when God created us, impact 
that rippled throughout history. We get to Jesus and then what Jesus did at the cross, another huge impact that ripples from that moment on throughout history. And if you love and follow Jesus today, you are part of that history. You are part of that ripple. That ripple effect throughout history has come to you. It's come to me. It's come to our churches today. Do you get that? And the impact of Jesus on those early Christians is that they wanted to tell people about Jesus. They created the early church and that early church then rippled out as they wanted to tell other people about Jesus. And the message spread around the known world. And then it spread throughout history and it comes down to us. It comes down to us, that ripple where we have responded in faith to Jesus. Now, our Christian story is a story of impact. And it's an impact that started with generosity. But more than that, it's a story of legacy. And this is how I think we get our link between impact and legacy when I ask the question right back at the beginning of this message. The impact of God, the impact of Jesus, the impact of the early church have built a legacy that has rippled throughout history and we are part of it. We are part of that legacy. So the question for us today, now that impact ripple has come to you. Will you continue it? Will you continue it by loving God, following God, having faith in him, by living his way, sharing the good news about Jesus? Are you going to be part of the legacy today? Or does the ripple die with you today? Maybe you sort of thinking, well, hey, I think Stephen's getting a bit carried away. I think Stephen's getting a bit carried away today with this whole idea of the ripple. But am I? I mean, as we come to look at the book of Acts just briefly now, and we've studied the book of Acts before, so I'm not going to say anything new to you. I think briefly we're going to see that ripple effect spreading out. As I mentioned earlier, the gospel, in the Gospels we read about the life of Jesus, what he said, what he did. We saw all the great miracles. We get to see and understand his death and his resurrection. And chapter 1 of Acts, that starts to or well, continues that story talks about after the resurrection Jesus being ascended into heaven and at this point Jesus gives his followers a mandate the mandate is this to be witnesses we find in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 witnesses for him into the entire world he wanted his people to tell people about him Jesus is challenging his followers to have an impact on the world around them. Why? Because of the impact that Jesus has on them. See, I think Jesus really is creating a ripple effect here. And to ensure that the ripple effect can keep continuing, he gives them the Holy Spirit to be able to help them to take that message out. Now, that's where we get to the end of chapter 1 of the book of Acts. But then we hit chapter 2. And later on in the chapter where we hear those famous verses about the early church and the description of the early church in verse 42 through to 47, we see here that these followers of Jesus, that they are giving away their possessions to the poor, they're worshipping together, and they're facing severe persecution. But together, they can endure through it. And then we get these beautiful words at the end of verse 47 praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Yeah, it's easy to look at these verses and think, wow, that early church was awesome. They were so great. Yeah, they were growing in leaps and bounds. The Lord added to their number on a daily basis. And we think, wow, what an impact in the world. And it was. But what I think we sometimes miss is the question of why. Why could they be such an impact? Well, I think the Gospels leading to Acts chapter 1 gives us the reason. And that is the impact of Jesus. They have seen 
Jesus and what he did for them, and therefore they then want to do it for others. So as we think about that, when you look at how they gave away everything to the poor, they helped each other, they faced severe persecution, how could they do that? Right? Because you would think they would just give up or they would keep some stuff for themselves or whatever it might be. But I think because they saw the generosity of Jesus, that he died for them, was raised to life again, conquering sin and death, because of the impact of that, because of the ripple effect that touched these early believers who came together as an early church, it had such an impact on them that they wanted to impact others. They saw the generosity of Jesus and they were impacted by it and they wanted to be generous to those around them. They would then impact the world and it would spread and the ripple effect would continue out. And when we look throughout history, we've seen that the church has done that and the ripple effect has continued. Now that early church, they were generous. From these verses, you can see that they were known for their generosity. And you read other, some of the other letters in the New Testament, and we see that the world around them knew. They may not have agreed with why they were doing it or what they believed in, but they all knew about the generosity of the church. They shared everything they had, and they cared for people. That is the ripple effect. The ripple effect that spread out and took the gospel message with it and the church expanded throughout the known world and then also throughout history, all the way down to us. That ripple is still going. The question for us is, will we be a part of it? Will we be a part of it today? Will we be a part of the impact? Will we pass on legacy? In one of Paul's letters, 2 Corinthians, in chapter 8, verse 7, it says this, But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, because of all of that, he then says this, See that you excel in the grace of giving. The grace of giving. Paul was challenging them to be generous. Everything that you've been given, he says, go out and be generous. Now, this series, The Generous Life, it's been a series where we've challenged us to go on a journey, a journey of generosity. We began in week one, that, and I said we needed to become more aware of the needs around us. Therefore, we could be generous when we saw the need. Last week, we looked at moving from desire, yes, yes, I want to be generous, but I don't know how, to action. So we moved from desire to action. First week, awareness. Now we're getting things going and we're being more active in being generous. And then today, we want to wrap it up in week three with Paul's message. You know, you're aware. You're becoming more active. So go do it. Excel in the grace of giving. Excel in being generous. That God was generous when he created us and provided for us. As Jesus was generous. And the ripple effect that spread from that, so the early church, known for what? It's generosity. Right down throughout history, the ripples of grace and generosity have come to us. So today, will we have an impact Will we build a legacy of generosity that will ripple out from us? Or, do, or will it end with us today? Will we be a part of that ripple process and continue it and, and continue the legacy? Or does it die with us? Now, I think generosity inspires generosity. And the generous life can be contagious when we commit to being generous people. It can be contagious in our homes, contagious in our churches, contagious in our schools, our workplaces, our community. Generosity inspires generosity. That's the ripple effect. Will we be a part of it? So how do we, 
Now, when you get down to the practicalities, how do we as believers in Jesus and as a church, how do we multiply our impact through generosity? Well, I've given you a number of answers over the last couple of weeks that we can actually think about. But I want to think about a slightly different one today. I've mentioned it before, but I want to put a bit more focus on it. And I think we get a hint if we jump into Matthew's Gospel for a moment. In Matthew 5, verse 16, it says this. In the same way, this is Jesus talking, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Did you catch there what Jesus said? Where does it say we should let our light shine? In the privacy of our own homes or just to ourselves? No. He says, let it shine before others. I just want to take a moment here just to jump in. Because sometimes when we think about generosity, and I've encouraged us in the past to think about in the last couple of weeks to tell our stories, and that's the practical way I want us to think about today, sharing our stories of generosity. That sometimes when you think about that, I know well-meaning Christians that think, oh, sharing your stories, that's prideful. That's showing how proud you are in what you've done. And it's a valid thing to think about. It's valid for us to think about our motives, why we want to do something. But when I read this verse, it talks about, let me read it to you again. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. I think it's talking here that if our motives are right, share your stories of generosity, share your good deeds, and it will have an impact on others. What's the impact? What did it say there? To glorify your Father in heaven. That is why we want to be generous. We want to be generous. We want to have this life of generosity so we can have the impact that people will notice, people will see that we are doing it so that they can see God. Now notice, now these verses, they're saying uh, not that, hey, we should look at Stephen or look at someone else at what they're doing. It says that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It's all about God. When we live the generous life, it's not for us to get a pat on the back. If that's why you're doing it, please look at your motives. But that's not why we should be doing it. We're doing it so people will glorify their Father in heaven. So when you're being generous, let people know why you're being generous. And let them know you're being generous because God has been generous to you. And that God also wants to be generous to them. Now, practically, if you help someone with giving out some food or giving someone some money, now, when you do that, say to them, look, God has been generous to me. I don't have a lot, but God has been generous to me, and therefore, I know that God wants to be generous to you. So I'm going to give you this food. I'm going to give you this money and see it as coming from God. God wants to bless you. God wants to love you. God wants you to know him. Do you see how that works? So that in our generosity, we are pointing people to knowing about God. And I'm sure you can think of many other examples and ways we can do that. That's an impact. Now, right back at the beginning of this message, I started talking about uh, words. And I said about the word impact and the word legacy. Yeah, we are here today because of the legacy of what Jesus did. We are here today because of that ripple effect and because of the legacy of the early church. And throughout history, churches and believers and the message that they have shared, the generosity of sharing that message is why we are here. We are here because of that legacy. The word legacy means anything handed down from the past to the next generation. So I want you to think about that for a moment. I want you to think about that in terms of the legacy that's been given to you, the ripple that's come to you. Now, what are you going to do with it? 
Because when we're generous, we're not generous for ourselves. When we're generous, yes, it might help someone, but it's not really just for them. The generous life goes far beyond our story. Even if we die, if we live the generous life now, it can have an impact on the people around us. In the communities in which we live, our churches, our homes, our schools, our workplaces, that impact can leave a legacy that will last well beyond us being here. So again today, the ripple has come to you. What are you going to do? Are you going to continue the ripple on? Are you going to look to make an impact with a life of generosity that you can leave a legacy? Or does it die with you? Now it doesn't matter what age you are today. If When you're watching this, it doesn't matter your age, your circumstance, your experience. None of that matters. You are creating a legacy right now. Think about it. You right now are creating a legacy. What legacy is the most powerful that you can create? Now I'll give you a hint. It's not money. It's not power. It's not fame. It's not education. It's none of that. One of the greatest legacies that we can have is generosity. One of the greatest legacies that we can pass on is generosity. Why? So that people can glorify our Father in heaven. Generosity is not about us. Generosity, in a way, is not so much the person it's going to. It's about opening the door so that people can come to know Jesus. So today, that's why I wanted to share earlier. I think one of the ways to do this is share your story. Generosity is catchable like the gold. Generosity leads on to more generosity. Could you imagine our church if we were known for generosity? Could you imagine the impact in our community? Imagine the impact in our own church, in your church, in your community. Isn't that what we want to do? Isn't it that ripple effect? We don't want to stop it. We want to keep it going. And God wants us to be a part of it. That's why we've looked at this series, The Generous Life. How can we get on board with what God is doing? He was generous. Jesus was generous. The early church was generous. And those ripples throughout history, the generosity come to us and we came to faith. Does the ripping stop with you today? Or will you share it with others? A generosity that can change our lives, our communities, so that more people can glorify our Father in heaven. Let me pray. Gracious Father, we do thank you. Lord, through this series, it's been a challenge. It's been a struggle particularly for many of us living in country towns like Casino, we're all struggling financially. In certain places, we might even be struggling to keep the doors of the church open. But Father, we trust you in all these things. You are the one who is in control. And we want people to come to know about you. And Lord, if our legacy to our own kids, our grandkids, our community, if a legacy of generosity can bring people to know you, Father, then help us to be abounding in generosity today. Lord, help us to be more generous. Lord, help us to cut someone to come into contact with today. We can be generous too. We pray that prayer now, today, and every day. In your name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with me as we've looked at this series. A great short three-week series looking at the generous life. And my prayer is that you are feeling that you are becoming more generous. You're becoming more aware. You're putting that awareness into action from desire to action. And then today, you want to leave an impact. You want to leave a legacy 
You are creating a legacy. But which one is it? If you could join us uh, Wednesday night, it'll be great to join us then on Facebook. 6.30 will be our time. So Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Or next week, we start a new series. We're going to get into some of the really meaty theology in the Bible. So I'm excited. We're going to jump around the Bible and look at different things. So that should be a great series as we look at theology and why we believe what we believe from Scripture. So please join with me then next week. 10 a.m. Just go to a Casino Baptist Church YouTube channel and you can see it there. May God bless you and your family this week. And I'll see you, uh, prayerfully, on Wednesday or maybe next Sunday. God bless.